Welcome to this edition of Upse on Air, another English podcast that we are very happy to share with you. Today, our guest is Attila Bella Pato. He is the librarian of the Library of the Center for Ethics, and we look forward to chatting with him and hearing some of the things that he will tell us today. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a bit of a surprise, uh, I must admit, but it's a very pleasant surprise to, to talk to you and to present. Well, it's nice to talk about what you're doing in the library, a little bit about your life before you joined the library. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. Um, I know a little bit about you, um, and you, although you are fr from Hungarian origin, you were born in Romania, and you know, so this mixture of, of cultures, how did that influence your life growing up in these border areas? Yeah, I, I was born to a, a Hungarian community in that sort of like famous, in famous part of Romania called Transylvania, mm -hmm. famous for Dracula or all sorts I wasn't of going to ask, legends. but you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and with this name that Attila, the Han, so it's, it is a really a, a specific combination of, of uh, like references. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, I, I, uh, I grew up uh, until my 17 in, in a Hungarian community, Quite, quite a closed community, I would say. Uh, a bit conservative, traditionalist, with Protestant ethics and, and all sorts of uh, uh, things uh, that, that belong to this sort of 19th century uh, uh, family. But it was very interesting. And uh, uh, for example, we couldn't travel. <laughs> mm -hmm. That, for example, like Hungary was 10 kilometers away. But it was uh, closed, basically, so we and couldn't travel and to that's Hungary, interesting, not you to are, speak about the Soviet. Yes, but you, the, you, the you, are, you are basically Hungarian, but you can't travel to Hungary. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Interesting. But, we, but for example, we watched Hungarian TV, uh, basically only Hungarian TV, uh, listening to the Hungarian radio. Basically, everything was Hungarian, Okay. Yeah, except the official uh, language uh, that we learned in school. Yeah, but that was very official and did, uh, in our neighborhood. Not too many Romanians occurred. At so that you time. grew up speaking Romanian and Hungarian. I, I, I spoke some Romanian, but I must admit that I learned much more twenty years later, mm -hmm. when I or fifteen years later, basically when I started to work for uh, the Open Society Foundation in Timisoara. Okay. And then I and then then I I re revitalized my, my Romanian and I still speak and I'm very glad now to, to of course to oh. have Romanian in yeah, that's a very interesting combination of languages and backgrounds and contexts. Um, so you mentioned that your community was more conservative, quite traditional. You also have said that your parents and your grandparents were not what would be called intellectuals, but they were the ones who instilled this love of history uh, and philosophy in you, in a way. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was again, interesting in, in a family tradition, yeah, that... Uh, we, we basically mm, had the same old legends from the Hungarian kings or heroic things or whatever. Uh, but after a while, it was a bit too uh, like a short list of, of stories. So I was interested in much more. But my grandfather had a, had a, had a, um, um, a very interesting profession. Mm -hmm. um, he owned a... He used to own, a, uh, or the family basically, a small atelier, a workshop for repairing typewriter yes. uh, machines yes. and pens. Yeah? And it was in the center of, 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 of our city. And, and it was very interesting because all sorts of intellectuals came in or, or, or different people from administration. And, and my, my grandfather and my, uh, my father and the uncle worked there, so it was a family, a family, and, and, and it was very interesting. And you also spent some time in this workshop as a yeah, child, right? Yeah, you yeah, spent yeah. some hours there working or just sitting in the back room while the grown-ups were working? Yeah, we watched them talking and it was very interesting. Maybe I can, I can tell you that it was a multicultural environment, yes. as we would say today. At okay. that time, of uh, course, it was not a, not that usual. Not a, not a, not a, not a word that we would use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So this, this collection of, of intellectuals and writers sort of gravitated towards this shop, and it must have been a very interesting group of people for you to get to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, there were some poor, let's say, painters or, or, or writers, and they, let's say, didn't have money mm -hmm. for a typewriter mm -hmm. or to repair, and they gave some a painting or, or something. Oh, yeah. wow. So my grandfather had a pretty nice collection of, <laughs> of paintings. Of paintings connected to his yeah. work. Okay, that's yeah. a, that's and, they, and, and he had friends uh, among, uh, among these artists and uh, journalists and, and all sorts of people. So it was and really... also from the Jewish community, right? Were they also even from the Jewish community? Yeah, who the would... city it is famous for its uh, Satmar, the Hasid. Uh, Jews, mm -hmm. uh, um, very conservative ones, and uh, I still remember the, the small synagogues, and uh, I hope one of them is still working, that mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. suffered a lot. Yes. I, I think my, my father, I, I hope my father was not that, that crazy during the war, because still afterwards he had, he had uh, friends and, uh, and, um, and acquaintance in the, in the Jewish community, but so that's this maybe a good sign. A <laughs> good sign, but in the times when you were growing up, I mean, politically it wasn't such a good thing, right? I mean, it was quite, it was quite, it might have put you in a bit of a difficult situation to have this group of multicultural people frequenting your shop. Yeah, in the 70s, 80s, it, it, uh, it came a bit uh, sharper it was this uh, crazy dictator mm -hmm. uh, who introduced such a sort of North Korean style of, of, of a political regime, which is pretty uncomfortable, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially for intellectuals. Yeah. And, and um, that was, that was uh, economically, politically, socially, culturally, uh, uh, very un uncomfortable, of course. But it was not from one day to the other. Mm -hmm. So it's was very it interesting, like, you know, the frog. In the, in the boiling in, in the water, boiling water yeah. yeah. So you don't I, uh, just yeah, you know, oh, here and there, more and, and more. once once you just wake up, that what is this? What is mm -hmm. this hell that you yes, are you are in? in? So it was, um, it was not not very uh, not, uh, not pleasant. particularly pleasant. No. Yeah. You also mentioned that you enjoyed history because you were not able to travel and mm -hmm. you know, knowledge about other places was not as, as available, that was this part of the reason for your interest in, in history, to learn more about the world or how the world works or why the yeah. world is as it is? Yeah, as, as I said, the legends and the taboos and all sorts of interesting things around you mm -hmm. and you have only questions and no mm -hmm. answers. Mm -hmm. So maybe not everyone, but I started to get uh, a bit deeper interest in, in that. And my grandfather had some intellectual ambitions, mm -hmm. but it was again difficult in his, in his childhood. Yeah. So he, 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 he went to study this typewriter issue mm -hmm. or business. But, um, uh, but, but I had more, more luck, perhaps, and that's why my parents decided to, to leave the country to move to Hungary so mm -hmm. that we could, or I could study. could study. That was one reason. And you started by studying history, right? Not philosophy. I mean, yeah, I, I start, I, yeah, I started uh, uh, with, with, with history, uh, okay. studies in his, history, yeah. Okay. In Seged, um, that was a university. In Seged, yeah. in the south of in the south of Hungary. Yeah, this is okay. the southeast. So it was uh, previously we were in the northwest of mm -hmm. Romania, close to the Soviet or present Ukrainian borders mm -hmm. into Hungary, and then we moved to the Yugoslavian Serbian mm -hmm. border mm -hmm. today, and and Romania. So it is it's again all the interesting borders like changing. Yeah? Yes. So, so people moving, uh, why so many Germans are there, how the Hungarians uh, and the Romanians had their relations in yes. the past, and then Yugoslavia. So all sorts of interesting things, and, and, and yeah, I was interested in, in, in the, in the, in the I course. I can imagine, and, and growing up in that, it's not something mm -hmm. which is theoretical and far removed. It's something which you literally see around yeah, you every day. <laughs> you feel it on your skin. Um, so when you were a student, you became involved in a research center for ethics at your university that was established. Yeah, it was uh, like a hotspot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Steged, uh, the, the, the faculty of philology. Uh, of course, Budapest was different. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's a big, uh, big city. But, but, but that time it was like a sleeping, relatively large city, still sleeping under political pressure. Mm -hmm. But but after after eighty one. 
um, basically galvanized by the Solidarność and the Carta 77, but particularly after the Polish, uh, the Polish events, uh, the students started to organize their own um, circles, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, in 85, 85 I guess, Mm, uh, uh, some students initiated um, a collection, uh, a special collection, okay. mm, with um, with um, with uh, some is that literature. Okay, so it was very interesting at that time. And was this did this form part of the center or was uh, that, that that was or, or, that was the original? Was that the, the original center. of the mm -hmm. center? Oh wow! So it, later on, after the ninety, it, 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 it developed, it, it even developed more. into a, into this research center, basically, or. It, it, it gained an official status, okay. but before it was just basically a, a photocopier in a room. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was just nothing. And and George Soros. Uh, yes, the <laughs> famous money. philanthropist yeah. from Hungary. Yes, yeah, yeah. So he, he gave the money to to buy a to buy a photocopier. Wow. And the students were uh, uh, senior students. My friends were heavily engaged in. Uh, in, um, in, um, in, in, in the studies, yeah, in central of, of studies of Eastern Europe and totalitarianism and minor minorities. So, so they had this sort of agreement with some young researchers, mm -hmm. those sort of reform communists, mm -hmm. and they had this Marxist-Leninist department mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. and, and so they made this agreement somehow and, and, and we started to copy and collect materials. And that it was is really great. And then and to see how it's, how it's established from there. And it was actually yeah. quite an important uh, meeting place for different intellectuals, journalists, yeah. you know, thought leaders in, yeah. in Hungary. Yeah, of course, uh, gradually it developed into mm. this into this sort of like center. But at that time, it was just a, like a, a room, mm -hmm. and uh, the meetings uh, took place mostly in in private uh, yes, class with uh, with lectures, uh, discussions, and of course, uh, coffee houses or mm -hmm. pubs as well. Oh, of course, <laughs> I, mean, I, I couldn't help but see one of these books, you know, philosophy or ethics at three a.m. So I can yeah. imagine that many of the world's you know, issues are discussed well over some wine or some beer. Yeah, it doesn't mean that some, some may wake up at three o'clock to, to start philosophizing. Some people at three o'clock still are still, are still philosophizing from the night before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as a student, you developed this awareness and um, sort of, I suppose, feeling of association with some figures. Um, you, Tomasz Mazarik was one of the, of one of the, figures that you actually felt some kind of kinship to or that you felt some connection to, am I right? Well, I, I started uh, my interest in Eastern Europe, of course, with our own history, like the Hung Hungarians, of course, but in a larger con uh, context, uh, Czech, the Czech history and Czechoslovakia um, um, uh, became into a sort of like in the center of my attention, and that's not true. But, but in a way, I started to be to be interested in in, mm -hmm. in that and reading uh, history. First of all, of course, Prague, the '68. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was at that time. It was only mm, like 20 years ago, or not even 20 years wow. ago. So it was, of course, for us, it was a history. Yes. But uh, but uh, but uh, still, still, it was interesting and relatively fresh. And, and yeah, so I was, I was surprised later on to meet people and to talk to people who were, who were engaged in 68, like Ludwig Vaculik or, wow. or, or Menzel. At that time, I was, of course, just a, just a, a, a young fellow uh, reading the, about these great events. And, and yeah, of course, 56 Hungarian Revolution mm -hmm. and 68. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, so the Czech, uh, the Czech history is very, very interesting. Uh, although I must admit that I was a little bit, um, I was a, a little bit, um, how to say, uh, disillusioned mm -hmm. maybe with with uh, with Prague, mm -hmm. my first visit, okay. because it was it was very grey and okay. dark. Also because of rain, it, it rained for three days. <laughs> sure. Um, and but the, the, the buildings were so grey, and uh, and 
it was really a depressed uh, a feeling of depression. So against the Hungarian uh, uh, society, which yes. started with its boutiques, yeah, with okay. its colors or, or mm -hmm. music and everything. Mm -hmm. Here it was it was really a, a, a deep sense of, of depression mm -hmm. uh, that you you felt in 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 in, in, in uh, on, on the street on the, on the street. street yeah, but so. you did a presentation for a <laughs> class about yeah. Prague 1968, and you got really carried away with this, yeah, right? It you was got a, really. It was a, it was a very it was a very uh, intensive moment uh, because we joined um, the the senior students mm -hmm. in their in their seminars studying um, studying reading uh, history of century and they, these guys were really excellent guys and we had the, the chance to give a short presentation short presentation and i was interested in in Prague 68 and i i had uh, I, I had some notes with me and i prepared myself but that was my my first presentation i guess a bit longer and after 90 minutes i was stopped at it <laughs> so after that 90 it, minutes yeah. your short yeah. presentation yeah. was you know yeah, okay. was perhaps enough <laughs> but, probably but... it was quite chaotic <laughs> yeah and, and all sorts of like i was i was a bit like with this filled with the with the with the stage fever so i think <laughs> It was a bit of catastrophe, but, <laughs> but for me, it, it, it was the start, the start of my interest of, in, in the mm -hmm. Czech uh, history and yes. culture. So, at the moment, you are the librarian of the Centre for Ethics Library. Uh, tell us about the library, what kind of books you have in there. Yeah, it's a great library. It's again a sort of a research center, mm -hmm. so I feel quite comfortable mm -hmm. with, uh, with this um, environment. And I think I was also selected uh, exactly for that reason mm -hmm. that I talked about my 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 experience uh, and and once upon a time uh, job long ago yeah long <laughs> long time ago uh, in in the in, in Seged. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and probably that was one of the reasons. And, and I, I admired uh, the sort of management or the, or the, or the colleagues. Uh, and it's again an initiative by, by young uh, researchers. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, it's quite a, similar, um, a similar project, basically. And it is a, it is a research center, mm -hmm. a center for ethics. It is an a Czech project mm -hmm. with international uh, staff. Yes. Yep. So it's very interesting, very exciting, uh, very professional. Yes. But at the same time, very friendly, very cozy, relaxed, uh, relaxed, and and people coming with their dogs or or in, in yeah <laughs> t-shirts, whatever. So it's, it's it doesn't look like a serious uh, serious academic, academic environment. But they yeah. work really hard and uh, they publish really good philosophy in that sense that it is not only academic so it's not like the history of mm -hmm. whatever but they are really thinking and there are lots of uh, workshop and applied uh, applied and ethics. applying yeah but yeah but yeah so applied practical issues mm -hmm. uh, ethical issues and and very vivid mm -hmm. very vivid uh, uh, conversations discussions and and it's a very good community i think they they managed to to bring together of course, uh, the library is uh, is a very nice uh, collection. Mm -hmm. Of course, nowadays the trends are more are more are, are changing towards mm -hmm. um, towards um, uh, e or digital, yeah online digital, sources digital, yeah digital libraries online sources. So it is not that much frequented as it should be. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I am conservative. Maybe, maybe, maybe due to my origins or mm -hmm. my my. But because I think that that the that the, the online world is very vulnerable mm -hmm. and um, not really transparent, okay. for example. Yep. So it's a flux, flux of time, flux of uh, everything. Okay. Uh, I mean, texts, yes, papers, publications, mm -hmm. people, everything, which is nice, on the one hand. Mm -hmm. But I think that it is very difficult to orient yourself. Okay. And I think for students, it might be very useful to get uh, started in a library. With real books. To real books. Real books. Yeah, to see that these are the encyclopedias mm -hmm. or these are journals. Yes. The book. Yeah, what are the parts of a, of yes. a, of a book? What is the publication in scientific right. words? And uh, and to analyze uh, books, texts, yep. So yeah, I, I'm I'm still a bit conservative. No, I, uh, I hear you. If, if, if in, in some of the work that I do, we have to teach students about 
the different genres of texts because it's when you're online it's just all these masses of texts but when you get to a library and you compare the differences and you see what is credible what is reliable what is so valid it's more source, palpable more palpable, palpable, palpable. Uh, transparent yeah. and and you get a, 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 i think a better a sound start start into in, your in academic reading, research think, in academic yeah. research and reading Absolutely. so in that sense i'm i'm i'm, I'm for this library and trying to invite people, of That's, course. Well, and it is a very nice library in which people should visit. Mm -hmm. And it's not only students from the Faculty of Philosophy who who would be able to find books that are relevant mm -hmm. in, no, in this No, no, not at all. Library. It's basically a public library, I would say. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's part of the, basically part of the Central Library, mm -hmm. University of Pardubica. Uh, but we also, which means that uh, that teachers, researchers from the university may come in, mm -hmm. but uh, everyone, anyone may come in. Yeah, so they need a, like, a visit card, a basically, card, which card. is formality. But, but uh, tell us about some of the interesting ethical issues in. I don't know, transport or chemistry or medicine or economics, for example, because that's what we're talking about. It's not just a, a, a philosophical <laughs> faculty of arts and philosophy issue. Mm -hmm. Ethics is yeah. broader. Uh, we are trying to purchase books uh, for for everyone, basically, mm -hmm. which means that for, for all the, the faculty's departments at the university related to ethics. But I usually tell my students that uh, everything is connected to philosophy or mm -hmm. ethics, mm -hmm. ethical issues. So philosophically, like science, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's always like a theory and a meta theory. So I think a, a, a good scientist should be familiar with a theoretical background. And these theories always have some philosophical background. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And of course, ethical issues are in a way more general. Mm -hmm. In that sense that we have our everyday life problems yes either individual like cheating on our wives or or <laughs> how to how to bring up our kids yes but also in the public life okay yeah? so it, we have uh, questions all the time like uh, like um, uh, gay marriages uh -huh. or gay marriage yeah yes. or addiction problems okay. drugs you know? okay or bioengineering environment oh, right. uh, so all the time we we migration mm -hmm. yeah. so all the time facing facing problems that have a, a philosophical or, or or definitely ethical ethical Com background, and background mm -hmm. yes and yes. and in that sense our our library is really good what is from. the best part of working in a library being surrounded by books what is the best part about working in a library the best part would be, and I hope will be, to communicate with people. <laughs> okay, that's nice. And to meet interesting <laughs> like people in my, who come. In, in my grandparents, in my grandfather's workshop. Oh, right. And to see people, to help people with some service that may help their work. Okay. And to talk to people from different areas. Uh, why I said wood, what, why, what condition, of course the COVID, yeah, yeah. so it, was, uh, it, it is a new project, the library is new mm -hmm. and it was so, it was so unfortunate to, mm. to see this COVID. Yeah, to not have real, real visitors yeah. in, yeah, the, in the library. People had just started to, to come in before, mm. before the lockdown and I hope it will be. We hope it yeah. will be better as well. Mm. Um, can I ask you what is a disadvantage of working in a library? <laughs> A disadvantage. Disadvantage. Are there any disadvantages of working in a library? I can't remember any disadvantage. I would think that I would it? I would be tempted. I would go through the shelves and think, I want to read that book. I oh, want yeah. to read that book. I want to read that yeah, book. Yeah, frustrating you know? <laughs> too. That would be to, my problem if I had to true. work in a library. That is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, books coming in, or you you are surrounded and and. Uh, Whichever of these books. Too many I, books, I not would, enough time. I would, I would uh, read. But um, the situation is almost the same as, uh, as at home. <laughs> okay, you have the same. <laughs> not few thousands, but few hundreds Hundred of books. books. Of okay. course, I, I have read some of them. But it's good to, to, but to, good to have around you. Mm -hmm. Because it's like a spirit. Yeah? So the spirit is there. Mm -hmm. So you can see the name. Yes. Yeah, like Patochka, you can see Foucault, or you can see the names, and and it, it gives a sort of environment mm -hmm. that these names are there, and you go out in this ephemeral world mm -hmm. with all these craze there, yeah, mm -hmm. and and this is this is something like a stable something which grounds and you yes. and reminds you 
that we, we have 3,000 years, 200, 2,000, few thousand years of tradition. Mm -hmm. And Plato and Socrates was on the Agora, and they discussed exactly the same problems that we are discussing. Yes. And you feel this sort of, in a way, stability or this yes. sort of eternity. Uh -huh. So it, it may be a bit calm. You, you may calm down a little bit. Yeah, so don't, don't worry. It's the same world. It's the world. same world, the and, same and, issues. And, 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 and the world is, is powerful. powerful. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. and, and more stable. St more stable and stable and, and enduring and then mm -hmm. and then the crisis and uh, yeah then the crisis all around and us the, the, yeah oh hmm? so what are some of the most interesting ethical issues that you have encountered recently that you find interesting on a personal level yeah uh, it was basically 20 years ago <laughs> when i stumbled into a book uh, upon my, my, my friend's uh, recommendation, and that was uh, Hannah Arendt's Eichmann in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I read the book, and we decided to translate it mm -hmm. into Hungarian. And this is, I think, one of the books that might inspire everyone. Because uh, Eichmann was a Nazi, uh, 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 gangster, if you want. Or, or, no, it's yeah, a sympathizer. Uh, no, 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 no. He was an uh, official. Uh, uh, official, uh, yeah, official, yeah, high ranked official who was responsible basically for, for organizing the transports from mm -hmm. Central Europe, particularly in Austria, mm -hmm. uh, the Czech Republic, Hungary in particular. And, um, and, uh, and the funny thing or the provocative thing is the subtitle. That is uh, the report, a report on the banality of evil. Okay. Because uh, Arendt went to Jerusalem when Eichmann had his uh, trial and uh, was sentenced to death, mm -hmm. 61, 62, and wrote a report uh, uh, on, on, the, on the trial. Okay. And afterwards, he, uh, she published uh, the story okay. in a book and gave this subtitle. To the book, the ban oh. uh, report on the banality of evil, oh. which is unfortunately not 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 printed on the on, on the, that one on the cover, uh, and it was of course a big scandal. Mm -hmm. But it is basically about a very simple thing that the cause of the evil. In many cases, even in this grandiose uh, style, is that the people do not think. Okay. Yeah, forget thinking, or okay. they are not able, or they refuse thinking, which is a very banal. Yeah. But it's that's on the a origin basic of level. evil. Wow. And even today, maybe it's high time to start. Start thinking, thinking. again. And that's the message from the past wow. uh, for the yeah. future, maybe. <laughs> for the future, to keep thinking. Yeah. And the trouble that it can get us into if we don't think carefully. Yes. Okay, um, last question. If somebody were to say, the past is in the past, history is history, uh, why do I need to care about what happened 500 years ago, or even 100 or 50 years ago? What would your response be to that? As somebody who has studied history, who loves history, what would you say? How would you respond? Uh, that's it. Yeah. So the history is here with with all these uh, all the all these uh, events, maybe legends from mm -hmm. my childhood. I remember it's not bad to have legends, mm -hmm. but we shouldn't stop <laughs> thriving on legends only. Mm -hmm. And we have many legends. Yeah. So we we and maybe maybe they are relevant. Yeah. So we see the names of the streets or the statues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or or yeah. So these are sort of Masaryk. Yeah. Yes. Legend, but that can be an empty figure if, we don't if you do not understand yes. the message and uh, and the the, the legacy yes. which bring it brings okay. with it. Then it is some, there is something lost, and people are very proud of their, their national identity mm -hmm. or history in Hungary, for example, mm -hmm. but I'm not quite sure if they are familiar with, with the lessons yeah. of the past, either in positive or, or mm -hmm. perhaps in a critical 
way, which is also very mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. uh, but more, more, more um, um, challenging way. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You've given us a lot to think about. Uh, it's been really interesting to talk to you, uh, not only about your own journey uh, from where you grew up and your exposure to intellectuals and thinkers and writings and how you moved into your own version of your family's workshop, you know, now surrounded by books. And thank you very much for sharing your story with us. Mm -hmm. And thank you for keeping the library so alive and exciting and relevant for everybody on the okay. campus. Thank you for inviting me and I hope that, uh, that the readers, visitors, will come in after this crazy time of lockdown. We so hope so. you're all welcome. <laughs> okay, so it, Attila is inviting you to come and visit the library. So thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Facebook. There are so many different options and places where to see us. So we hope that you will join us again next time. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>